Everything is Awesome is part of Courts and Parts, a podcast network featuring pop culture, TV, movie, and geek podcasts. Check out some of our other shows like TV Ate My Brain, Let's Chat with Revelin Friends, and Podstalgic at courtsandparts.com. Welcome to this week's edition of Everything is Awesome. I am your host, Kev, and this is the show where we sit down and talk to awesome people about awesome things. Uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter at Real Awesome Pod. You can also follow us on Facebook.com slash Real Awesome Pod. Give us a call at 267-223-4965 if you want to share your thoughts or whatever it is you want to say, uh, and we'll be sure to play it on the air. You can also uh, email us at awesome at GrooveNumberStudios.com. I believe that's your email. I haven't I haven't plugged that in quite some time. Uh, and if you uh, care to snail mail us, you can snail mail us at Everything is Awesome uh, at uh, P.O. Box 177 in Fairless Hills, Pennsylvania. 19030 in care of Tellist. That's important. I've learned, and we'll get to our guest in just a second, uh, I've learned because we share a, a P.O. Box with a sister company um, that we have to make sure we put care of that company there. So if you've been sending us stuff, like those precious, precious drawings of zombies riding dogs, we haven't been getting them because the, the, the post office has been turning it away. Uh, so just put care of Telus on that stuff and we'll, we'll get it. All right. This week's guest uh, is a author who, um, when they presented the uh, their project to me, um, I it just it jumped out as like a unique thing uh, because it is a, a, a an original um, based off a classic, I guess is the best way to put it. And I'm sure once we start talking, um, that statement will be proven wildly wrong. Uh, since, as you know, uh, I like to usually go into these blinds. Uh, so uh, please welcome to the show author of The Pied Piper. Uh, hopefully I got that title right. Uh, Michael Scepter. Hi, how are you doing? Good, yourself. Thanks for doing the show. I am feeling awesome. I just find it funny you were talking about <laughs> zombies on dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, we I, I used to do, uh, and we're actually about to release a couple episodes. They're the last ones in the, in the tank. For a podcast that we tried to revive, and it looks like it's kind of, uh, for, for lack of a better term, uh, dead in the water again, uh, called the Zomcast. And it was a horror podcast that... Um, oh. It was. It had strong roots in in the Walking Dead lore. In the in the uh, right, it's a podcast, okay, okay. yeah, it's a po- it's a podcast that we've done. Um, uh, I've done on and off for the for I guess the last eight years, the entirety of the, the Walking Dead. And we started like just promoting getting pictures of zombies riding dogs for some reason, uh, <laughs> and it's just an image. I don't know how it popped up, but it was just like something okay. that I said offhand. Uh, and it just naturally became something that I wanted to see people draw. All right, okay. And now they've just been sending it to the sister company. <laughs> well, I mean, they've been sending it to us, and uh, probably it's. Uh, so we should. I guess we should clarify that uh, for me, it's it's late, very late in the night, going into early morning hours in the uh, in the east coast of uh, the United States of America. And you are just based off your accent, based somewhere in the UK. Yes, definitely. Yeah, London. Oh, okay. So I, I'm it's, it's literally just early morning, <laughs> like super early. <laughs> it's but, it's. What I feel like normally this is. I'm actually drinking water. A, I'm out of beer. Uh, but but B, I'm also just trying. Like I've, I've been sick, so I'm just trying to flush it all out. And, uh, but this is normally, you know, oh, my, my okay. beer drinking time and it sounds like probably coffee is what you're enjoying right now. Yeah. I can, yeah, I would have loved to join you and have a beer as well, but yeah, for me, it's a bit <laughs> awkward. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, the, yeah. I mean, I mean, when I was in my younger days, uh, I could, I could wake up and, and start the day off with a beer at, at like 10 o'clock in the morning. But uh, in, in my 30s wow. now, as a responsible parent, uh, that is something that's not only frowned upon by society, but frowned upon in the household, myself included. So, 
Yeah, I like how you have this as a response. <laughs> yeah, to yeah, uh, it's it's amazing. Yeah, like, yeah it's amazing suddenly. that being a parent has yeah. really grounded me in like the choices I make. Of like, well, uh, I, I'm not, I'm not going to smoke anymore. Like, I gave that up when I, you know, a couple months into finding out I was going to be a dad. I don't day drink often, at least. Like, it's very rare that I day drink. So. Wow. Okay. It, it must have been it must have felt a bit weird, like just walking around the kitchen and you just saw yourself over the bed. And you thought. That looks. That doesn't look responsible. <laughs> I'm gonna have to stop this. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's those, it's just those little things that like, I, I like I don't even like they phased out naturally. It wasn't even me thinking about it. It was just like, all right, yeah, okay. like it just kind of like, oh yeah, you know what? Pfft, drinking in the middle of the day, not a good thing. <laughs> uh, and, what is this? Yeah, thing? Now I I will say that on the rare days that that I have off from my day job, and no one else okay. does. Uh, is the days that I'm like, all right, like I think Columbus Day over here in the states is one of the days that okay. I have off from my day gig, but no one mm-hmm. else in my house does. My my fiance is a teacher. They they she has to you know she has school. My kids, uh, what my daughter is in daycare, and my son just started kindergarten and he had school. So like I was able to sit around at home and play video mm-hmm. games and and. <laughs> Day drink, and, and mind you, day drinking. There's a couple of beers. I'm not like right, hammered right. on my own, but so it was like. No, it was, well, you had to be alert to play the games and stuff like that. You just, well, exactly. I was just, I'll have a few beers. Exactly, you know. because when also when you're in your 30s, I don't know. I, I mean, you, I don't know if you're in that age range or older or younger, but no, no, I'm, I'm sort of like two or three years away from that. Okay. Yeah. No, like yeah. when, so in, in your thirties, I mean, I'll be 34 in 2018, uh, playing video games is a, I'm also, you know, because I'm a parent, it's harder and harder to find time to do that, but be like my reaction yeah. times are much, much slower. So, uh, day drinking <laughs> is way not recommended for, especially if you're going to play shoot 'em up games and whatnot. Wow. So. Yes. You're, you're such a gamer because you can even talk, about your reaction time Jeez, who does that <laughs> which is <laughs> like, which is funny because uh you know I, I i don't ever really consider myself a gamer i mean i i guess i did when i was a teenager but even then like okay the term gamer to me are are the uh the kids or guys or, or whatever that are sitting around playing first person shooters all day long and i only played like golden eye on n64 uh it was really- i i you know what, Kev? I, I thought the same thing, but I actually uh, used to do a marketing for a company called Asus or Asus. You, you probably heard of them. Okay. Uh, and they, they own the ROG brand. And I was like, who, who still does gaming? Like teenagers? No. Like my work colleagues yeah. with families, they were, they were gamers. Like they made sure they had this dedicated time, one or two hours a day, instead of watching TV, instead of doing all these other stuff. They would just be like, okay, I don't do Game of Thrones. I do gaming. And that was a deal with their partners, you know. So it's like, I would continue to game for as long as I live. Yeah, I I wish I... I guess maybe my priorities aren't in the gaming world anymore. The the type of games (laughs) I've been playing, like, that I really enjoy now are, like, Telltale Mm. games. Because... Uh-huh. Their games are so story driven that it's like I'm literally watching a movie or a television show, occasionally hitting a button uh, just to kind of <laughs> help the help the progress and like, shape the yeah. story. Yeah, I'll have to try this, and yeah, oh, let's see what that does. Okay, fair play. And and I'll tell you, if it was, I, it was actually their. I don't know if you're familiar with with their games, but obviously they they had uh, Walking Dead is a huge one for them. Um, and, but it was okay. actually back to the future, the game that they had, uh, that like really kind of sucked me in because it felt like if you're a fan of back to the future movies, um, and you would, you want to experience more of that story, uh, in a game version, that's more, like I said, it's, it, telltale is not about like gameplay. Like again, the, 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 it is just about you being a fan and just yeah. be, you know, you know what? You say that. I was in a shop the other day, and someone said to me they've released like a South Park game. So if you're a big fan of South Park, the TV show, you can actually like play this game. And I'm, I'm, it sounds very similar to what you're saying now. Like it's like it's a type of tabletop game where you, in the storyline, and you sort of just choose here and there, and you get to do crazy stuff. Yeah, as a different character. Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually I have a couple. I've seen a couple of my friends on Xbox playing that game uh, within the last yeah, few days. Um, and this, it just come on to the iPhone, I think, or to the phones. Oh, I don't know. Like, the, so the 
there's I mean I'm sure there's a South Park game that's just on the phones, but I I've seen the I don't know the name of it, but I, I've seen people uh, in maybe it was on my Facebook feed that they were like posting their achievements mm-hmm. from Xbox um, playing it. It's it's okay. yes, uh, they've had like South Park's released two games on the consoles that were, I think, wildly popular if you're a South, uh, South Park fan. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely a South Park fan, but, you know, I've, I've stopped gaming, so I just didn't really look into that. But I thought, you know what, I'm a big fan of South Park, but hey. We'll see how that goes, but yeah, it could be something similar. But yeah, and I'll yeah, t- do I have time? Yeah, if, probably not. If you're not, if you don't have a lot of time for gaming, and and you're just uh, Telltale Games is the way to go because everything they do. And if you're a fan of The Walking Dead, I highly recommend at least the first season that they produced in that in the gaming series. It is hands down some of the best storytelling I've ever seen. Um, wow. Okay. It's, yeah, it's just so, it's so so good. And same thing, Back to the Future feels like a spiritual sequel to the third movie. Um, it's a it's a little uh, the graphics are a little clunkier than everything that they do now. Um, but but aside okay. from that, it, it's it has aged pretty well in the last. I think it's like a, a eight five to eight year old game, something like that. Okay, uh, you know what? If you're into the film, if you're into the TV show, you, you probably don't really care about the graphics. It's just about the story and see how it develops that sort of thing so exactly and i'm a big story guy when it comes to entertainment so like um i can be very forgiven uh forgiving of um like say like the walking dead uh especially Mm -hmm. early on uh i i would notice like weak writing um and (laughs) and just like occasionally weak acting but point a to point b to get that story told was always fantastic mm-hmm. and and that's all I cared about. I was like as long as I'm satisfied with the story, I can forgive weaker acting, weaker writing, weaker directing, things like okay. that. Okay. Okay. Oh. I mean it managed to swoop you in, isn't it? Yeah, because you are dedicated to it. So yeah, yeah. that kind of works. All right. So uh so, so do you prefer Mike, Michael, what's what's your preferred first name here? You know what? I think Americans would prefer MJ. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> my, my, yeah, my well, yeah, one of my initials is actually Jay uh, Jackson. So I think they would actually prefer MJ or Mike or whatever, whatever works. Okay, and we'll go MJ. Yeah. I like MJ. Um, yeah. All right. So uh, we've we've bantered. I feel like a bowler now. <laughs> I feel like a bowler because you know usually you, you you hear that MJ with Michael Jordan you know, type thing. Oh, see. All right. Well, this is going to show how much of a nerd I am. I hear MJ and I think of Mary Jane Watson from Spider Man. <laughs> oh wow okay yes <laughs> nerdy cat yes makes sense uh but i also you know the, the, like the i mean that's just what i'm thinking like you know that's my nerd brain it's also in america yeah michael jordan and michael jackson are the uh probably two most known mjs uh mm. in america if not the world oh yeah and i'm sure someone's gonna be like did mj write a book <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, so MJ, uh, we've we've bantered yeah. about uh, nonsense long enough. I like to before we get into the project that you're here to talk about. I like yeah. to um, get into the origin story of uh, whatever it is my guest is on to talk about. And um, so, so you have a book that you that you're that you've written, um, and uh, we'll we'll get to that in a second. But uh, writing, where where does that passion start for you? Um, I, I sat back and I was, I was thinking about this actually the other day and I've always enjoyed writing, um, because I always enjoyed reading from a very young age okay. and I, I grew up reading Goosebumps, Famous Five, Annie Blyton, uh, and Sherlock Holmes. So I, I, I was always like reading that stuff and enjoying it. And I, I think as soon as you finish doing a lot of reading, you think to yourself, maybe I can have a go at writing. So I used to do quite a bit of writing and then for some stupid reason i think i just grew up thinking who, who grows up to be a writer like who does that so i just stopped uh i just stopped like really trying to be creative i just thought mm-hmm. it's all about reading self-help books and being logical and being messy and computer science and everything else so i just i just left it i just i, I to be honest i just left the whole creative process um because I, I just didn't think it was enough to get me to be an adult, <laughs> to be responsible okay. yeah. type thing. Yeah. yeah. So, so, um, so writing is something I always enjoyed and 
I think it came back to me that that love to write again uh, came back. And funny enough, I was in Italy. I was actually, I went for a holiday by myself to Italy because I like just exploring the place. And I, because I love a lot of history, mm-hmm. um, I was just impressed by the whole city. Like, you know, they call it the eternal city. And when you're there, you're like, wow, it's an impressive city, Rome, uh, especially. And I just thought, what could I do that allows me to, to travel around the world and meet different people and explore different cultures and still be myself and, and, and leaving sort of thing. And the only things I could think of was either speaking or writing. And I was like, it would be so cool if I could actually write and just, I can write from anywhere, you know, because I, I can go into a cafe and write, you know, I, I don't have to be stuck in one place. Um, and I was like, I want to get back into the whole thing of writing again. Um, you know, but I'm not your typical nerdy writer, like someone who's a typical writer, like grew up in the circles of writing and doing English yeah. literature. No, it was just, I love sharing. I love storytelling with people. And writing is just me noting down what I'm saying, so to speak. You should see when I'm writing my book. It's, it's, it's very weird. I'm like literally speaking the book. <laughs> yeah. That's so I have, I'm actually, I don't know if you're, um, in the know of, uh, oh God, let's see if I can pronounce this right. Uh, Nano Rimo. Wow. Uh, it's, it's it's National Novel Writing Month, and I I know it's a it's an yes. online thing. Um, I I assume it's worldwide, but I mean again, my my world is my worldview is literally uh, maybe out you know Philadelphia. That's my okay. worldview is okay. uh, where I'm from. So mm-hmm. um, it's it is definitely I know something that like, me and a couple other uh, people who dabble in writing have done, and like I have participated. This is my third year participating, okay. and the, the deal with them uh, is it's just to help like get young people to write. Really, it's it's not geared towards me at all, um, okay. but it's geared for, to to help get younger people to write, and it's it's setting a goal of can you write fifty thousand words from November first to November thirtieth in that in that one month span, and. Mm-hmm. Um, I have failed both, you know, the, the previous two years and I, I've worked on it maybe two days this month. Um, just because of, you know, as mm-hmm. soon as I, you know, as soon as I was like, Oh yeah, I'm going to do NaNoWriMo, everything else hits the fan. So, okay. um, but it is, uh, the, the writing process, it's, it's interesting to hear how other people write. Like you, you know, you said you, you, you almost speak it out loud. It's me. It's like, all right, I have to zone myself off. And it's interesting because b- prior to NaNoWriMo, uh-huh. I was a guy who had to sit down with uh, a pencil or pen and a notebook and write. Uh, you know what? Guess what? That is what actually gets me to actually write even better and stop procrastinating. Because I, I just, yeah. I, I think, because uh, I know, I think Leonardo da Vinci is very well known for like being a chronic procrastinator, right? And I yeah. feel like sometimes I'm like that. So I, I oh, kept thinking okay. to myself, yeah, I'm going to sit down on a desktop and, and you know, type it up and, on a laptop. But funny enough, I wasn't really doing much, but I was like, you know what, let me just go old school, so to speak, and just write it down, like some ideas and some research and everything else on a pad with a pen and paper, um, and then just speak it out. And you know what, I was just writing. I was just like in the flow. So mm-hmm. I guess you just have to find what works for you, like what gets you to actually Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. And get it done. And, well, and it's it, it's because now I have gone back to, and I think it's because of, I I am a guy who I I need if I'm not spinning sixteen different plates, I, I don't know what to do with myself. Right. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm basically like the less crazy version of the Joker. If you've ever seen the Dark yeah, Knight, yeah, where, like, like fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's it's it's. You know, he makes that analogy. I'm like a dog. You mm-hmm. know, I, I wouldn't know what to do if I if I chased a car and caught one. You know, <laughs> I'm kind of like that guy. Like I don't if I'm not if I'm spinning one project and, I, and and that's the one thing that I quote unquote caught. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know what to do with, my, with myself. So that's so so t- being that guy who's spinning so many different plates. It two years ago when I started uh, NaNoWriMo, mm-hmm. it, I was like, all right, well if I have any shot of hitting fifty thousand words, like I just need to use Word. I have word. to go right to the. I have to go right to the computer. So most of my writing now is done right on my, on my laptop or okay. on my uh, desktop at work. Um, 
it, it, during my lunch hour or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, and I, but you're right. You know, you mentioned the, you know, the, being a procrastinator and, and I am that guy. I'm such a procrastinator. Um, and it is, yeah. it, it is hard to find that balance of, of, and, and I guess maybe like it's, I procrastinate like, cause I'm not, cause I'm also, I'm working on podcasting stuff. So like, I'm, I'm not procrastinating just work in general, I'm procrastinating that yeah. novel, which is weird because it's like, for me, it's such a thing that like, Oh, I know I want to write this. Uh, and I, I, it's not like I have writer's block. Like I know exactly what I want to do. I'm just putting it off for, yeah, I don't know what reason. So, so I think I was talking to someone about that actually. And I was like, yeah, I think I'm a procrastinator with certain things. And they were like, it's, it's very simple. It just doesn't matter yet. Wherever it is, yeah. whatever is you're delaying, it's not that's you know it's not such a priority. And like if I said I was going to give you a million dollars if you got a fifty thousand word novel <laughs> by the end of the month, Kev, trust me, you will be you'll be like I'm done. Like I'm oh, on, yeah. I'm on eighty thousand now. Like I, I, I'm, I'm let's go. <laughs> so it's just yeah, yeah. it's just that maybe you probably enjoy more of the podcast and you feel like that's something that's going and you got your fans listening in. So you know if you write a fifty thousand novel, maybe yeah, one or two people might see it and whatever. Um, but I think you're already getting a reward for doing the podcast and you feel like yeah. that's more real. Um, but yeah, if, if you had waiting audience, you know, saying we want to buy whatever you write, mate, uh, yeah, you'll probably prioritize it a bit more. So it's just one of those things. And you, you never find out until you do it and, fi- and finish and you think, hmm, okay, that was interesting. And, yeah, yeah. And, and it's interesting because I've, I've also, um, I don't know that I've heard from other writers this, but I've definitely mm. read somewhere and it may have been on, on NaNoWriMo's site mm. that if you actually like sit down and you, like you finish that novel, that first one, that's mm. the hardest one to do. And, and I'll ask you is, um, well, ha- have you, the, the novel that we're going to talk about later today, is this your first novel or, or no? So this is like my, I think I'll say my second novel. Uh, okay. Yeah. So every writer will tell you, and I'm sure I can relate to that, uh, is that your first novel is great to you in your head, uh, but it mm-hmm. just comes out and you, you, you one day look at it and think that was rubbish. That was like, <laughs> yeah, you can't stand okay. it because it was just one of those things where you got excited and you thought, yeah, I've, I've, I've got a story, man. I'm going to be the next JK Rowling, you know, and, and you put it out there <laughs> um, and you wait for a while and you, you know, you look at it and think, what was I even thinking? Is that even me? <laughs> you, 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 you know what I mean? But that first novel yeah. just helps you get rid of the sort of, if you're someone who liked writing before, it gets rid of the rust. Uh, and if yeah. someone is new to it, it just, it's a good learning curve because it's one of those things that you, you do and maybe your friends and family will sort of buy into the book and everything else. And they never come back and tell you what, what they thought about the book. And you're thinking, hmm, okay. But once you look back on your first novel, you realize, okay, yeah, I, I sort of can see why no one came back to me with a review or anything. Um, and it it's it sets the tone. Like, do you want to do that again? Uh, and yeah. do you feel like you can do it differently? Or you, you're being yourself? And I think for me personally, I should say, the first novel, reading it, I think I was trying too much to be a writer and not just being myself. And I think... Mm-hmm genuine writers like now i'm enjoying the process because i feel like whatever i'm writing is really who i am like the crazy me like you know there's a bit of comedy there's a bit of romance things that i genuinely care about so i Mm. i'm now finding it easy to come up with ideas and plots and characters uh because i i just feel like i'm now in that space where i'm just being myself whereas before I was like, let me look at how J.K. Rowling writes. Let me look how this person writes. And, ooh, okay, let me write it like this way. Uh, let me try to learn what is an, what's a story arc, you know? I was trying to be very old, geeky, like, to, let me really be logical and learn, you know, what to, how to write a story. But um, to be honest with you, when you look back at this, you know, if you look at the videos or interviews of, of writers, uh, especially first-time writers, they just wrote what came to them, you know? Uh, and... That's what matters. Just telling a story. Yeah. Everything else. Well, that's. Yeah. And I was to say, um, not, uh, and I, I apologize to cut you off, no, but um, uh, it, that's something that I hear a lot, not just from writers, mm. but like, and, and I'll, I'll say this is where I've heard it the most uh, recently, is um, from wrestlers, from professional wrestlers. I, I listened oh. to a couple podcasts. Um, mm. na- I'll name drop one uh, is 
the Edging Christians Pot of Awesomeness, I believe is what it's called. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's it, well, it, it, I started. Well, I'm a big fan of Edging Christian. Uh, you know, I'm not a I'm a uh, attitude air. I'm a 90s kid right, okay. when it comes to wrestling. Okay. Um, so like I grew up on Stone Cold, Shawn Michaels, The Rock and, and Edge and Christian were in were, were part of that culture back then. And um, they're, they're now retired. But they, what they they say a lot, especially w- either when they're talking by themselves or when they're talking to guests mm-hmm. uh, on there. Um, a lot of times, you know, when you're in that business, you know, Vince, you know, Vince, you know, Vince, you know, Vince McMahon or, or whoever, mm-hmm. uh, this is what we have for you. And it's it's um, they they basically say what you said is when you the, the when you crack that nut is when you are yourself mm. and you say well I'm going to interject myself into this it may be a variation it may be an, an exaggerated mm-hmm. version of myself but, but that's, once that's, yeah that's once they're themselves mm-hmm. they have the most success yeah, yeah you know what because I just I I'm now just finding it easier to talk about the story. I'm, I'm now finding it easier to just come up with other ideas. Like I literally have to stop myself, like stop it. The book is finished. Right. Like don't add anymore yeah. because you, every time you have a conversation with people or you, you read something online, like, you know, on the newspaper or something, whatever you flip. Oh, wow. That's so funny. I can put them in a book. It can work because I can see my, my character. Yeah. So now my characters are in my head. Like they're literally in my head. And, uh, mm. I, I'm, and I'm sure sometimes it's going to come across that, Oh, how is he speaking? I'm speaking like the little rat, uh, the friend of the Pied Piper. So it's 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 fun um, because you're not getting to a stage where you're sort of obsessed. Uh, uh, and yeah, I think wrestling, even music, it's just it does take a lot of time because I think when you start off, like for me personally, I, I try to play it safe. So if if you yeah. if you try to look up my my first book, which I think I've managed to take down, <laughs> uh, but if you look it up. You've buried. Yeah, yeah. Well, if, if you look it up, you see that actually, um, I was not really expressing myself. Like once you see the Pied Piper, you think you you wouldn't believe it's the same author. You wouldn't think I was the same person, but you could sort of see hints. But I was trying to play it safe. I thought, no, you know, let me let me really just write it this way because I think that's what will work. That's what will crack mm-hmm. the code. Um, but actually, now I was like, look. I'm just writing because I love to go back to that place where I was expressive. And it's funny that as you grow older, you tend to want to go back to that space, that time when you were free sort of, because life just, yeah, life just yeah. hits you. Like, not like you're saying, you, you've got, you've got a daughter, a wife, and you've got responsibilities and everything else. There's some things you obviously move away from, but there's certain things you just uh-huh. think to yourself, you know what? I, I, I was, I was free. I felt free doing those things, you know? And I'd like to just get back into that space where you're just in that zone and you can just be expressive because that's what matters at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Like you're just enjoying yourself. Yeah. So um, I'm, I've had a lot of fun with the book and I still continue to have fun with the book, to be honest with you. Um, and yeah, I'm enjoying it. And and that's um, I think like any kind of creator, whether and and you you know you mentioned musicians, mm-hmm. you know musicians are, you know some people that I've talked to, and like I you know oddly enough I can relate to a lot from like when you're that angry teenager. I just I didn't pick up a guitar, I picked up a steel chair and whacked <laughs> you know my friends in the head. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, but you know I you know it, it's any kind any kind of um, you know creation that people do music writing podcasting Mm. uh filmmaking whatever um it is you know i can i've been doing podcasting now for uh over 10 years and it's the show that i do now this show here uh, is completely different than what i did 10 years ago and 10 years ago was about like all right let's like exploit it for you know what i think people want to hear and what what i think people want to hear is what what they're doing on radio yeah. is what we did. We, we, we mimicked podcasting was so new 10 years ago. We just mimicked what we heard on, you know, a two hour, a two hour radio show. In, yeah. Here in uh, yeah. Just try to copy the same. Maybe it worked. Yeah, exactly. And, and now fast forward to 2017, you can find podcasts about anything that you want to mm. find. And I mean, there's a million interview shows, but it's, it's the one that for me, like I feel the most creatively happy and that I, you know, in, in any other podcast I've ever done, this is like the one where I'm like, all right, like I, there's, 
the only person I have to answer to is my guest. Mm -hmm. And like, I think, and even then I don't want to say I'm very selective, but I'm selective on, on who I book Mm -hmm. because I want to make sure more than anyone else. Sorry, listeners. This, that means you too. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I'm going to have fun and I'm going to have a good conversation because that's what, for me, this show is yeah. about it's just me having a fun. I've never thought about the listeners, if I'm being honest. And I'm sure some listeners would say that's quite evident that you yeah, never that, think that's about me us. done. That's me. I'm putting the fun <laughs> down. I'm, I'm, I'm switching it off. <laughs> <laughs> but it's. I think that's. If, you know, it's. If I don't know if you're a fan of Kevin Smith, um, but that's he's a he's a filmmaker that you know. Ten, uh, 20 over 25 mm-hmm. years ago uh, at this point or just about 25 years ago made uh, clerks right, okay. and, yeah. and, and, and then uh, movies that he made, you know, between clerks and basically Jay and silent Bob and Zach and Miri were things that he, you know, they were part of him, but they were also just like, Hey, this is what I, this, these are movies I have to make to, to stay in this industry. Uh-huh. And now we're seeing this new version of Kevin Smith who makes, questionable movies like tusk and yoga hosers <laughs> um i'm a fan yeah. of them but like he he puts it out there on, on on front street saying these movies are for me like i i don't expect anyone to like these movies but this is what i need to do to, to be yeah. creatively yeah the, the funny thing is that's what a lot of um people do you know i, I think um you know not to sound a bit corporate whatever or markety um but steve jobs was being asked like you know when you made the apple computer who did you make it for said no just for us we wanted to make something really yeah. cool for us. And yeah. it's only some people are like, actually, I think that is quite cool. <gasps> 10 years later, 20 years later, you're now a trillion dollar company. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. But it's, it's, I enjoy that. You know, like I'm writing a book for me. Like now I, I laugh yeah. at my yeah. own book and I'm like, this is going to be a fantastic book. You wait till you watch it. But it's like, I'm enjoying it. Right. So if I'm liking it, if I'm enjoying it, um, yeah, I'm hoping, you know, that other people might like it too, but it's going to attract a certain right people like who, who enjoy a bit of humor and a bit of this and a bit of romance and everything else. And I'm happy with that. You know, I'd rather have a book that I myself can even read. The funny thing is when I wrote the first book, <laughs> I wrote it. I didn't actually read it. Like, I didn't want to, I didn't want to go back and read it. I don't know why. I just felt like it was such a chore to write it. It was just such hard work. Yeah. Um, yeah. But this book, I, I go through to my head so much. I'm like, wow, this is going to be amazing. <laughs> but it's me. I'm excited by the book. And that's very different. And I, I, that's what makes me feel like, you know what? Whatever happens, I enjoy it. I think it's a good book. I, it made me laugh. I, there, there you go. There you go. I'll buy it. <laughs> I'm going to buy it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so we've been... Um, we, we, You've mentioned the book mm. a few times, The Pied Piper. Um, let's get into that. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure we'll go on, a, on another tantrum or two before oh, yeah, the end of the are. show. But, <laughs> Don't worry. Um, yeah, I, yeah, it just feels like a natural place to talk about the Pied okay. Piper. So why don't you uh, tell me a little bit about the Pied Piper uh, and where it came from? Okay, so um, the, the Pied Piper was something I would definitely line up. I said I always knew about the Pied Piper, um, but <laughs> it was it was something like people knew about the Pied Piper, like the story. Mm-hmm. And you know what? The funny thing is I was actually just doing some research for, for another project. Um, and I, because I like, I like a bit of history. Uh, and sometimes you find yourself falling into the internet rabbit hole where you start just clicking things and looking into things. Oh, that's interesting. And you end up somewhere else and you end up on YouTube and everything else. So when I saw the Pied Piper story, I was like, Oh, I, I've always heard about the Pied Piper. Um, and I read the poem and I felt like it just didn't finish. You know, I just, I just, and, and, and the okay. story is that, you know, there was this town in Germany and they had rat problems and they were having troubles with it. They're eating their cheese, their food, their clothes and everything else. Um, and suddenly this mysterious guy turns up, right? And he's like, look, I can help you, but you're going to have to pay me. And them being desperate, they're like, yeah, you know what, whatever, you know, like, yeah, we'll pay whatever you want to, you, you want us to pay you. And he plays the pipe uh, and the little rats come out, you know, all, you know, being enchanted and being charmed by the music, whatever. And they follow him down and into the river. He, 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 he kills them in the river, right? And he comes back and says, right, I've got rid of the rats. Um, my payment. Uh, they were like, well, you know what? The rats are gone now. We don't really have to pay you because they're gone, right? What are you going to do after that, right? Uh, and he's like, okay. 
Um, so he, him being angry, he decides actually, you know what, I'm going to play the pipe again and I will take your children away. Right. Um, and I think that, yeah, that's how the story ends. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's, okay, that's yeah. odd. So when you look up the Pied Piper, you see like links that come up on Google. What happened to the children? 10 creepy theories of what happened to the children. Oh, they got killed and everything else. And I just felt like, well, it's a children's story. People love it. But it just ends in a very funny, odd way. And I know the lesson was, you know, keep your promises and whatever. But I felt like maybe then that was more important as a message. Um, but I just felt like I can play around with it. Right, uh, I can you know because I like the Pied Piper because I think the Pied Piper now is a definition for someone who's very charming, you know. So I thought, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, I can, I can dabble in a bit of that. I can get him to be charming and to be everything else. Um, so I just used the story as like a baseline, as a starting point, um, t- because it just helps to add more color to the story that I want to tell. Uh, but you know, I've sort of taken the story from a children's story and it just made it grow a little bit, you know, to become like a teenager, right? So it's like a YA, Mm -hmm. it's like a young adult romance fantasy book. Now, and I went into romance because initially I think I just wanted to keep it fantasy, but I just felt like I was not being myself uh, because I I do, I I, I am a bit obsessed with like love and romance. And um, there's one thing I truly believe in, like we all want to be loved and to love, like, that's like a universal truth for me, mm-hmm. like, you know, to love and to be loved. Yeah, yeah. And that's something that easily landed itself with the Pied Piper because he's taken away these children and he's, you know, everyone's looking for him, right? So he, you know, when you start the book, he's actually stuck on some island. Uh, is a castaway, basically, uh, on another island. And he just leaves with animals. Like, it's like a Netherland uh, for him, but he's lonely. Uh, because he's obviously felt like he's cut off from the world because of what he's done. And everyone knows about it and everyone's looking for him. So he's lonely uh, and he he wants to also be able to love and to be loved. I mean, yeah, it's cool to be with animals and stuff, but if you want to you wanna have yeah. your own relationship and the person that you can love and just share his, his life with. So he sort of has to, uh, he finds himself back in Hamlin, actually, funny enough, because of that. Um, but he, he tries to go in and, you know, as a disguise, you know, I'm a prince from North Africa, you know, and I'm in need of a wife because I have all these fortunes and everything else. Because he thinks Hamlin is poor. They're going to, you know, they'll probably accept um, his proposal and everything else. Um, but his little ratty friend, you know, um, bats him out, basically, because um, I think the town had a problem with rats before. So he come with his little friend and, you know, people think, oh, the rat plague is back again. So he's, he gets arrested um, and they find out actually he is the Pied Piper and they're thinking, we've been looking for you for many years. Brilliant, you know. So um, so they put him in jail and they sentence him to death, obviously, because they're thinking, you took all our children. Um, and whilst he's in jail, he falls in love. So it's like, it's that me finding this unlikely place, unlikely people, because the, the, the girl he ends up falling for, uh, she happens to be the only child now but her older sister was one of the children that was taken away by the Pied Piper and the mother went mentally ill because of that so the mother is very protective doesn't want her daughter to get married ever um, and she, yeah she, she's not even planning to get married anyway because she's like I have to take care of my mom and there's something that happened there's a backstory to it so I'm not going to get into a relationship uh, and the Pied Piper is thinking well I'm dying uh, and I came in to look for love um, so it just blossoms and grows. And it's that challenge that I truly enjoy. Like, you know, the circumstances are like, you shouldn't really even try to fall in love. This guy's going to die anyway, right? But he's yeah, going to yeah, yeah. have to, you know, really like mature, grow up and, um, you know, try to impress this girl because, yeah, he, he took away her sister. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, so there's a lot of things going against you. But, you know, I've put little things in there to help. Yeah. Uh makes some things easier because he's got a lot of wealth uh, that he brought with him. So the dad is like, look, the guy's going to die anyway. So I think we can just take the money. <laughs> so you get married <laughs> and he's going to soon die anyway. So it's not like you're really going to be stuck with him. And I think she, she goes along with yeah. that. Um, but yeah, as, as you know and expect, <laughs> she, yeah, she does catch some feelings for him later on. I think it's super interesting that you were able to take this character and use it for, you know, a full mm. novel because 
as you were going over the original Pied Piper story, like, I, I, fr- I forgot how much of that story I forgot. Like, I knew it was about him leading yeah. rats away. Completely forgot about that dark, twisted ending where he kidnaps a bunch of kids. Well, everyone forgets about it, you know what I mean? So when you, when you tell people, it's almost like a, you're like a killjoy. You're like, oh, is that how it was? You're like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you didn't know? You're like, no, um, I just remember him, you know, playing the pipe. Uh, and the, the funny thing is, uh, for those who like who like traveling to these places where there's folklore and everything else, um, in Germany, the town Hamel or Hamlin, um, they still they actually have a real life Pied Piper, and he tells the story. But I think he sort of gives it a nice twisting. And I think Disney they took the story as well, and they just sort of said, well, he took the kids to a hill, and they went to like some sort of type of chocolate <laughs> factory or something where they were just happy and young. Uh. Um, and yeah, so I, th- I think people have realized, okay, that it's a story, it's a good story, but we'll just twist it. But I think a lot of people tend to avoid it because of that, actually, funny enough. I think everyone avoids it because it just has this twisted tale that now in the age mm-hmm. of, you know, children, protecting your children and everything else, it's like, uh, I'm not going to attach that one. Mm, no, we'll just leave it as it is. Whereas I was like, I'm going to take it on, you know. Yeah. No, and and I mean as a as a parent, mm. don't get me wrong, that's my h- biggest fear. Just watch them like a hawk. But I mean I I also am a fan of of good mm. stories and like it's actually it's wild to me that um that there isn't there hasn't been cuz Hollywood mm. especially is all about exploiting yeah. um you know, all properties that already exist. And it just kind of sounds like a natural follow up to, to that story is to see what happened to those kids or what happened to the Pied Piper afterwards. Like what, what, like, so it's, it's nuts to me that in 2017 that there hasn't been, whether it be from Hollywood or from the small screen with on TV or Netflix, like that honestly sounds like an, awesome like 10 to 13 episode series on netflix that's exactly how i felt like i was like why is no one doing anything about this and the funny thing is i think a lot of people who've, who've tried to who've tried to take in the story so there's been i think i don't know if you know russell brands uh um he's like a british comedian and um whatever. yeah yeah he actually yeah. did yeah no, he, actually, he actually rewrote the story as well so a lot of the authors or people who've looked into this they've just rewritten the story. They actually haven't tried to extend it or anything. They just maybe try to give it a better okay. ending because everyone keeps struggling with the ending, like what happened to the children? So some people just try to rewrite the story so that maybe the children just went somewhere. Fine, and that was it. Uh, whereas I just felt like, no, you know, let's 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 play with this thing. Let's, let's do more. Let's, you know, let's actually really find out about the Pied Piper because I just felt like he was hard done by. Everyone just remembers him for taking away the children. Right, but no one yeah. remembers that actually as the mayor who you know, and those people who lied to him and they did him wrong. So actually, when you find him in the book, I I do try to address those things definitely, and it's something that always is with him. Like he he feels the guilt. Don't get me wrong; he he's always contemplating like ah, I actually feel bad for what I did, but no, they they, they cheated me first. You know why is everyone not remembering that? So he's got this reputation. Uh, and the funny enough, the subtitle is Love and Redemption in the first series. So it, in a way, he meeting this girl and realizing, actually, I took away your sister, <laughs> you know, we, you know, it's like he has to address that, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, because obviously she's going to obviously ask, but she's all, she's already been told bad things about the Pied Piper, like avoid him, you know, th- this man is a bad person and they've got all these theories around him. Um, so it's always a constant story, but I think that just gives the story some sort of room to then play with it, you know, and, and take into a further series because, yes, at some stage, yeah, we're going to have to try and look for those children, aren't we? <laughs> I, I, like I said, I think it's a, a genius move. Like, I, when I, when you when you first presented me with, mm-hmm. with the Pied Piper and wanting to talk about it, I was like, oh, this is genius. Like, this is genius doing a sequel of, like, such an old classic story. But, like, it's you reminding me of what how that like that classic story ends it it makes it like i said it, it's it makes it so almost like um and i mean a show w 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 show or like right. a netflix yeah. show where it's it, it, it's it, it, it's it's it just makes sense it, it, it's like the perfect 
like teenage drama, I think, to, to or young adult novel. You know, that's ex- yeah, that's ex- well, that's why ex- that's that's how I felt about the whole thing because I just felt like you know I can't make it children's story because it already ends. Like people just just want to know that okay, he mm-hmm. took it with the children, whatever he did. And children are happy, like, yeah, we're happy. We've got what we needed from this book, whatever. And they act it out in schools. Um, I just felt like if I take and make the story grow a bit more to a teenage, teenager, uh, young adult, like, older people can read it as well as parents. But you can actually then yeah. find out that, okay, he had these reasons for what he did. And they are, they, their children are, well, they are somewhere. Um, and what, what I've done actually to sort of address that, trying to be clever with it, um, uh, there's a journalist in there in the book uh, so he's you know when the Papa was away he was the one just writing all these made up stories about what happened to the children right now he's yeah well he's doing that because oh, that's neat um, you've watched Les, Les Miserables right Les Miserables uh, I, I have seen like a, a version of that play yes all right okay so yeah I mean the, the I think this the, one of the officers is quite like a saddest guy right he, he, he doesn't think people can change and it's the same sort of character you have with with this um, yeah. um, uh, journalist. He's actually called Les, right? <laughs> because at some stage people will say, you sound so miserable, Les the miserable, <laughs> right? Um, so he's like doing okay. this work for the, for the mayor because the mayor knows that, okay, he instigated the whole thing because he cheated the Pied Piper. So he pays him and says, look, keep putting out all these stories. It's propaganda of how the Pied Piper is just ruining everything for everyone and the children and everything else. So the parents don't really get a chance to really know exactly what happened, what caused it. Um, so when the Pied Piper is in prison, this guy tries to come to him trying to get like the true story. So he's like, yeah, t- tell them, you, you kill the children. You did this for the children. He's like, so I'm addressing all these theories um, that people could have had about the children. And the Pied Piper is like, no, no, that's not what happened at all. He's like, no, you did. You know, So this guy's just trying to nail him down. Like you did something bad to the children, um, but actually, no, that that's not the case at all. Um, so I, there are elements where I'm trying to keep, that, trying to address that aspect about the children, uh, but at the same time, sort of mm-hmm. give a very good reason why he needs to go look for the children. Because for a long time, he didn't need he didn't need to go and look for the children. Like he's, that, something happened to them, yes, but he he didn't feel the need to do anything because he was like, I got cheated and I did what I thought was best at the time. Um, so yeah, I thought, yeah. hmm, if you make someone fall in love, especially, you know, history has shown that you can have the most powerful man in the world, right? But once they have become obsessed with a woman, yeah. they'll do anything. Uh, and I thought like that was a good reason, uh, because I, you know, I, in history, you, you see how men went crazy over Cleopatra, uh, you know, um, so I was like, okay, I'm mm-hmm, going to mm-hmm. genuinely make him fall in love with this girl. Uh, and that is going to really make him see what he did wrong and maybe how he can write it. But hey, he's been sentenced to death anyway. So yeah, let's see how you get out of that one. <laughs> so I, I don't know if I misheard you, but I, uh, it sounds, are you making this a series? Is there going to be more than one book? Um, definitely. Um, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Because you know what, when you, as a writer trying to sound like a real proper nerdy writer, but for me, I did, you know, I, I wanted to first get people interested again in the story. Um, and there is so much to explore because the kids are somewhere else. Like, you know, I'm not trying to ruin the story or anything, yeah, uh, yeah. but they are out there. Um, and he's going to have to go on a journey and look for them. And I thought, like, if I try to put that in the book as well, it will just be a big book and it feels rushed. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas I wanted to first bring him back and get people to know the Pipe Piper, his personality, and give him a reason to maybe try and go look for them. Okay. But there's going to be some interesting twists because, uh, <laughs> yeah, where they are and who has them and the price he has to pay. There's a lot of stuff that happens afterwards. So in my head, I already see, I've, I'm already on the third or fourth book in my head. So I'm already like way ahead. So I'm like, oh, you don't know what's going to come. But I know that it's enough now to sort of just get you back into the story and introduce some characters that you can then grow with as a reader. Like, you know, because I've, I've noticed a lot of people when they read books, they want to have certain characters they hate, they love, they root for. And, you know, so I'm introducing some more characters because I've, you know, the Pied Piper story only had 
the Pied Piper as the main character. Whereas now I'm actually introducing, you know, different characters in there, different things that you can then take with throughout the whole series. And in a way, if I pull it off, which, which is my hope, I will then own the Pied Piper story, so to speak. Oh. Uh, and people could just see, well, because essentially that's what will happen, isn't it? If, yeah. if this thing grows, um, it will become known as that. Like, oh, yeah, he's, he's, yeah, he's a romantic. No, yeah. it wasn't the original one, right? But I yeah, made him yeah. romantic. Yeah. You know, oh, he's this. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the search for missing children, the, the, the falling in love and the issues that he has. Um, it's just, it, look, it's been, a, it's like a platform for me yeah. to just explore yeah. and, and, and try different topics, you know. So, I deal with things like sexual harassment. I deal with things like um, raising, you know, raising children, uh, forgiveness, religion, and all these things. Um, they just come into it because it just plays nicely to that. Um, but yeah, it is going to be a series, def- definitely. Uh, I, I mean, like I said, I can't get over how genius this move is. It's <laughs> thank you. It's because um, I'm a big fan of, you know, continuity, and I love that you're not just <clears throat> like retelling or rebooting that story of uh, the Pied Piper that you're taking the, the classic story that already exists and you're just expanding upon it. Um, I, when, when, when properties do that, uh, you know, like I'll tell you, like for instance, the opposite of that, someone that I think took a misstep is mm-hmm. Ghostbusters. Um, I think oh, the new yeah. Ghostbusters movie was, enjoyable for what it was it made me laugh um mm-hmm. it, it wasn't the greatest writing and it definitely wasn't uh ghostbusters but i mean it, it also wasn't garbage like everyone was trying to paint it out to be but that being said i think that a misstep that they had was not just making it like there's no reason that that movie with tweaking the scripts just a little bit could have been a, a, a spiritual direction. sequel yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. um I, I, th- I think uh, it's just a case of people just playing it safe um, because they, you know, I watched Ghostbusters. It was such a funny film, right? And mm-hmm. we, we, we probably both enjoyed it for different reasons uh, or for the same reasons. But it's, it's it's one of those things where I think in Hollywood, sometimes they just think, okay, there's, there's people out there who love the, the original Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we'll just remake it because, yeah, we can get new actors and everything else and stick to it. And for some people, that works, people who are familiar with it. But I think it's just nice to then take a slightly different direction. And before you know it, you actually got a series out of it, right? Uh, and that can actually get new people to actually get to enjoy uh, and try different things. But it's, it's more risky to do that, do that way. What I'm doing is a risk. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Because but some people will be like, well, we liked it just not knowing what happened to the children. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I like the Pied Piper just for whatever he did. Just some people just like it the way it is. Um, mm-hmm. But for me, it's like, well, if you like it the way it is, go back and read the whole old stories, right? Yeah, you have that. Exactly. Whereas yeah. that's for me, it's a backstory. And I actually do include the original poem as in the prologue of the book. Um, oh, neat. The, yeah, the poem is, is nice. Like the wordplay in that poem is nice. But the, 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 the poem for me, I use it um, for those who are very nerdy. Like when they start seeing certain things in the book, they can, you know, if you 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 have to really tie the two together, and you will see what I've done. Like I've taken one little sentence here, or whatever, and I've explored it into a chapter, right? Um, because I think in the poem, for example, um, one little rat survives. Um, okay. So now in the book, that rat is his friend, and the reason why it survived is because it was deaf, so he couldn't hear the music. Mm. So it wasn't lured. Yeah, so it's one of those things I play on that. Um, and he, so he, he's going to have a conversation, you know, with it because he's like, oh, um, yeah, if you only knew what I actually was trying to do with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's that kind of thing. So, okay. uh, yeah, so it's, it's just one of those things where I'm just like, for me, it's just been a platform to just allow me yeah. to just have fun with it and just go crazy with it. Um, and that makes me feel a bit like a child sometimes, you know, just being able to do that to take a story and that was meant to just finish I think no I would drag it along <laughs> well and and that story I honestly like maybe it was supposed to just finish but the the way it ends it opens it up for so much um storytelling possibility oh, yeah, that what happened to the children like exactly yeah it's okay. that is it's astonishing that 
it had like because in, in 2017 it's hard to come up with original. i get why hollywood is rebooting or sequelizing everything because it is hard to find or come up with original ideas um but oh yeah but i, I think it's you know that's just a genius i guess that's why it makes it so weird that they haven't you know taking t- taking that story and done something with it because there is so much there that um i'm glad someone like yourself uh has as taking it upon themselves to to explore because it warms my heart that that, that it exists i guess because it is yeah, so much cool. like i said like i said in the beginning of the interview i am a huge fan of storylines um and mm. if the story from a to b is good like that's that's what i want and that's some like the pied piper story from a to b is actually you know for me it's 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 now like after you kind of giving a good synopsis of it is like well it's incomplete mm-hmm. like it's not it's not a complete story yeah. so yeah I, and that I'm realization jacked. you had is yeah it's what i had i was like i just feel like this is not complete like mm-hmm. <laughs> something has to be done and usually uh I, I guess that's that's why we do what we do like yeah. you felt like there wasn't a show where you just discuss awesome things mm-hmm. right so you you, you started it Right, you started a show, and you're like you're answering that question, and I guess that's what most of us try to do. Sometimes we have these questions that we feel like no one is actually doing anything mm-hmm. about it. Like, why is no one answering it? Because if I'd found like someone who's doing a series or a book, or whatever, about it, and I felt like, oh, I can see you, you've answered the question, I would have been like, I would have probably written another different kind of story and based on something else. But I just felt like no, no one has actually really yeah. done anything with it. Um, so I, I will take it upon myself and I'll do it. Oh, well, <laughs> They're very, you know, very British. I, I definitely yeah. appreciate you thought that I put that much time and thought into everything is awesome. Because, uh, <laughs> well, it, it looks, it looks at that way now. So you're like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, because for you, like you doing that, probably you just wanted to start something and you're discussing something. Uh, but the reason why you're followers is because no one is really, tackling that space or that well, topic and the, the, the way do. i equate it is that like a lot of interview shows are just that interview shows that have standard questions that you hear all the time and, and maybe some of my questions end up being that way too but i i think that like it, so craig ferguson um uh, he did he did the what the late late night show or whatever uh, after letterman yeah okay something that uh-huh. i admired about him um, was that someone, I, I think it was Kevin Smith mentioned it on, on a podcast somewhere that Ferguson um, never did a pre-interview. Um, he, they, like they would do, like, I think like the network wanted him to do one. So like they would quote unquote do a pre-interview, but he never used that material. Every interview that Craig Ferguson did was off the cuff. And to me that there's, there's a lack of that and that's and and i don't and again uh it's to say that i had that thought process going into this show is completely giving me way too much credit and the thought process on this show <laughs> the reason i don't do any the, the the any like pre-work on it is because i'm lazy uh but it turned into be a really good thing because i think that a lot of yeah, wonderful l- conversations happen L- laziness is what drives exactly. the world. I only discovered that later. Well, like th- that's what happens when you're lazy, because once something becomes like a chore, yeah. like a core, like oh, I'm gonna have to sit down and go through all these links, learn about this person. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes you should do that, unless it, like if it's political or something where you have to discuss something very yeah. like very logical and very academic. Fine, um, but in something like in the creative space, yeah. no, yeah. just just off the cuff. I just feel like asking this question yeah, exactly. And don't get me wrong, like. For me, I actually prefer it this way um, because I think I, 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 I did another interview and I booked another interview that was going to come up. Um, and yeah, there was tons of questions that were sent to my way. And you're like, okay, you answer them. But today I might answer them in, in a certain mood. Yeah. But by, by the time we get to the show, maybe I'm very chippy yeah. and very happy and I want to discuss something else. But it's like, no, stick to the script. Yeah. That's what you told yeah. us yeah. <laughs> before. You know, so... I, I do prefer it this way, Thomas. I was a bit nervous when you were like, I don't do pre-questions. I was like, 
<laughs> yeah, no, it's it's and, and, and again to me, it's like I call this show long form interview, but for me, it's long form conversation. Mm-hmm. And and you know this this is actually probably uh, one of the most. This is probably one of the closest things to a long form interview uh, episode we've done because we've stayed pretty well on topic. Um, that's not something that I do real well. A lot of times we we go on wild tangents. Uh, like no, you know what. what, what... That's that's just part of the exactly. whole process. Like it's like everyday conversation. When you when you have a conversation with someone in the morning at work or whatever, yeah, you might want to talk, discuss something, but you are gonna go yeah. off tangent because you just want to address that. An idea just popped popped yep. in, right? And like you you know, we already discussed that actually you can do a Netflix series. Yeah. I was thinking more theatre. But now I'm like, hmm, I will knock that down. <laughs> well, right? you could do so much with, you know, aside from the, the not, you could adapt your story into so many different things. Like I see it as, a, like I said, I don't know what your equivalent to the CW is where, where you have a bunch of teen mm. drama shows um, like Supernatural oh, yeah. and, and Vampire Diaries. Um, but and that's what I wanted to be. Funny enough, like I, I just thought it works in, in like in yeah. theater, but now I think about it, I'm like, yeah, because I, I can see myself having a good four or five books coming mm-hmm. out of this. Um, and I was like, that that excites me. And I, and I think in a way, the first book is going to let me know if people think the same thing, yeah. um, you know, because I don't want to go on a bender and write like a 200,000 word book mm-hmm. uh, only for people to be like, no, it's a bit too much for us. You know, it's like, no, no, it's not for me. Whereas now if I get people on board with the story, and they like the Pied Piper, they like certain characters, um, they will definitely then follow those characters yeah, through. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... It's... I, I yeah. think it is... You you lucked out in the sense that, like, you found something that was untapped, and you tapped it, and I I can't see it... I, I It's just... It's... Again, I, I've said it four times already, I think, but a genius move. Um so is the Pied Piper available now? Give us some details on, on if it is, if it's not, when it is. All right. So yes, 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 yes. Uh, so it is, I put it on pre-order. Um, so it's going to be out on Black Friday. Oh, okay. Come to think of it. Yeah. So it's going to be coming on, come on Black Friday. Um, so the moment it's done and I've just been adding stuff because I'm excited. Uh, I've been doing certain things, but the story is, 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 is still the same. It's just that certain things, I just feel like they work. You know, um, like just for example, the other day I just came across because in the, in the in the book there's a place where he lives and there's a lot of animals and stuff that he lives with, um, and I found this cute little spider, um, Lucas, I think, and I just shared the video, and people really found that cute, and I was like, I'd love to have that in my book, <laughs> you know, because he loves he loves animals, right? And I love animals. And I actually grew up in a, um, in a place where we had a lot of animals, okay. uh, which actually made me vegan <laughs> for a while because I didn't feel like okay. eating okay. animals. So the book is good, definitely good. Black Friday, so it makes it easy for everyone to just know when it's yeah, going to be out. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be out Black Friday, uh, and I think you'll be available ever, ever since then. Um, but I think for now, if someone is quite interested, like the Pie Piper, so if you're new to the Pie Piper, right, just just come on Facebook, just just go on Facebook and say follow the Pie Piper. Yeah. Just search for follow the Pie Piper. My page will come up. I think I've got about. 8,000 people now liking it and following it. Um, but I'm sure as and when I the story starts to come out, we will have a lot yeah, more people. Yeah. Um, because some people know, that, you know, they love the story. They know the story from a certain age and whatever. Um, and then on that page, I just share things like little snippets of what's in the book mm. uh, or what inspired me to write the book, you know. So you will see some of the influences. Um, I'm happy to discuss that. So I'm giving you like the the reason why or like what influenced me to do a certain part or this character that you end up hating or whatever. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's out, you know, it's going to be out. Um, the, the, you know, so if you're now following me on, on Facebook, you sort of keep up to date mm. until the book is launched. Um, but black Friday, black Friday, it will be out. And, um, it's quite exciting, and... but I, I love my story. So I, I don't care. Like I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you know that is the success you know no matter no matter what else happens as long as you're happy with the the final product i think that's the most important mm-hmm. thing at least that's the way i try to uh look at all the little all my plates that i spin all 16 of them uh, as long as i'm happy with with what it how it turns out that's all that matters um and, and yeah, the fact that I, anyone else I, likes I, it is just a is a bonus 
And that's what, um, funny enough, that's what a comedian said. He was like, if you if you get one person yeah. to listen to you, that's like, that's validation, yeah, exactly. right? If you get two people, wow, that's a bonus. Like, you've done well already. Yeah. Like, you're, you must be onto something. Yeah. Uh, after that, it doesn't, you know, it's, it's just a numbers yeah. game. Yeah. Uh, and I guess that's how I'm looking at it. Like, that one person is me. Yep. <laughs> I love yep. my story. Yep. So that's fine. If I get a second person like yourself or your, one of your listeners, even better. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like that's me. Like I've, I have fulfilled my mission. Exactly. Now I can write the second book, yep. you know, and I, yeah, I'll actually get started on the second book because, um, that, that's how I see it going. Uh, that's how I see it going. But it's a book that appeals. I think it's not just a typical romance novel. Cause I know some people, they just think romance, <laughs> love that doesn't exist. Um, it is a romance novel, but it's it has fantasy. It deals with topics that I think, most people can relate to, you know, some people are seeking redemption. You've made maybe a decision in life that you felt like was the right decision, but somehow everyone else looks at it very differently, you know? Uh, so you could relate to that. Uh, if you're someone who, you, you know, uh, the woman he falls in love with, she's growing up in a very difficult time uh, because of the parents and, you know, sexual harassment, you can relate to that and how she deals with it. Feminism is in there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and the, the Pied Piper has a character. And to be honest with you, the way I'm talking to you, in a way, the Pied Piper is very jovial, very happy-go-lucky, um, you know, wears his heart on his sleeve. So you are going to see a bit of that, a uh, bit of comedy, a bit of whatever. So it's got something for everyone to sort of be able to jump into the story and feel like they like that aspect and it's, it's being taken care of and it will be taken care of in the whole series. That, um so yeah it's, it's, a, it's a book i think will appeal to everyone yeah it's and especially you know the the way uh the news has been especially in the entertainment industry uh as of late um the 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 fem- feminism aspect the that sound like it's very topical um mm. sexual harassment and stuff like that so it's it's a very it's, it's very topical and i i i don't just try to I think one of the things some writers were saying were like, don't preach in a book. And I think a lot of readers hate it when someone yeah. preaches like, I think feminism, feminism is wrong. This is my opinion. Uh, so th- the way I just do it is just like, I just, uh, I, I just, if I think it adds color to the book and it, it just makes you laugh or makes you see things differently. I do that. Right. Because the girl, she's quite religious and the Pied Piper sort of, just he just plays with that. Like, if you think you've forgiven me, why am I still on this on the church windows? Right? <laughs> Clearly, you guys have never. You know what I mean? Like, because I think the history behind it was that the story is actually inspired by a stained glass on a window somewhere in Germany. Okay. So that's where they got the story from. So there's a bit of history there, in fact. But I'm just playing on that, saying it like, you know, I've come back and you guys still have me down as this. Why don't you put a mayor up on the window? You know, I'm not the only one did wrong. Um, so it's that kind of thing to show the hypocrisy, the double standards that people have, but I'm addressing it in a different creative way, sort of. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's like, it's like there's a bit of everything, but essentially the bits that I was really passionate about was the sort of the love. How do people fall in love, you know, with someone who's literally just done something terrible um, to your <laughs> to your sister, you know? Yeah, yeah. She went missing. Yeah. All right, MJ, uh, before we let you go officially, uh, are there any other plugs besides the the Facebook that you want to get out there? Uh, just the Facebook because, okay. you know, what, I find it easier <laughs> to to manage because I'm, I'm, I'm always on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, don't get me wrong. Like when I started this thing, like before when I first tried to write a book, I thought like I have to do, I have to have a website, I have to do SEO, I have to have a podcast. I have to, <laughs> and I just found, I just felt overwhelmed and just like you, I think when you're lazy, you're yeah. trying to be lazy. Yeah. You just want to do what works for you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and for me, Facebook works because I'm, I'm constantly on it and I can do that on my phone. I don't have to yeah. sit down on a laptop somewhere. Right, let me write it and upload it and let me do X, Y, Z. No, I don't want to do that. Yeah. I just want to go on Facebook, post it, answer questions. I'm, I'm, I'm there. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm like the pipe paper there on Facebook. So <laughs> the pipe paper if you've got questions, yeah. Like if you have something to share, just come on Facebook, just follow the page. And I'm, I, I post stuff like almost on a daily basis and it's just easy. Yeah. Like it doesn't feel like a burden. Uh, and funny enough, 
I think a lot of people, that's, you know, a lot of inventions came out of being lazy. Yeah, so. yeah definitely. Uh, whoever said lazy was a bad thing, I don't know. I, it, it has worked out pretty well for me thus far. Yeah, you, you mean, like, yeah, you, you just do what works for you. We, yeah. We, uh, uh, yeah, so just, just Facebook. Hit me up on Facebook. Uh, MJ, yeah. it's been a pleasure speaking to you. I can't wait till the book comes out. It is... Uh, I don't have much time to read these days, uh, but I, I, I always try to pick up a book, uh, at least a couple books a year. And, uh, the Pied Piper I is definitely going to be one of them. You know what? If you, if you, you might be not into reader, but maybe you're into audio cause you're a podcasting person. So I might actually, I'm going to get like an audio version. There you go. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I'm trying. I'm trying to cater to your laziness. Yeah, <laughs> you know what? I'll tell you what, though. I I am. Uh, I actually, when I do read, I do not. I, I'm not a fan of audiobooks, which is weird with my love of podcasts. But if they become a sponsor, I will be the biggest fan of audio. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, but yes. uh, I prefer. Well, you know I'm not an ebook guy. I need to have like I'll read an ebook if there's no other option. Uh, but I'm a okay. I'm a physical. I need. I, I like physical books. I'm I'm old school when it comes to to reading. Uh, well, I'm, I'm definitely sending you, like, like, I've come across people like that, like, they prefer the physical book, and I do as well. I, I prefer the physical book. I don't like an e-book, and then the battery runs out, you're thinking, oh, I was enjoying the story, but now I have to recharge it, you know, kills the momentum yeah. type of thing. Uh, whereas um, the audiobook, I find now I, I realize that some people, they just, if you get a very good reader, yeah. it just makes the story a bit more alive. It feels like you're watching something, but you're not watching it. So, it, so if you're a very visual person, the audiobook, you might actually enjoy it. And maybe my one will be the first one you try to enjoy. Uh, maybe if Audible comes knocking, I'll, I'll use the the everything is awesome Audible code uh, to <laughs> get the Pied Piper on audio, uh, Audible dot com. Yeah, I think they are trying to promote it much. So I think if you look into that, maybe you never know. You know, they, they might be listening in. Like, ooh, someone. Might, yeah, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll get that happen. Yeah, but I think I think I think audio audio books. Um, I didn't think about it until I spoke to someone, and they were like, "I'm I'm so busy." Uh, do you have it as an audiobook? Yeah. Because they can just put it in their car or something or when they're on the commute to work. And I was like, oh, actually, yeah. And, I, you know, some audiobooks are terrible, but some, when you listen to them, you can still multitask, you can still do yeah, other things uh, while you listen to the story. So, yeah. Um, I get the benefit. I totally get the benefit. But I, I and there's just something about holding that book that that is, uh, I guess, like the old school person in me, I, just, I can't get rid of. Hey, send me your address, and I think as soon as it comes out, I will try to send it over. Okay, okay all right. From England. Yeah, definitely. Because I'm, I'm going to buy a, a few copies anyway, and I think if you want to, you can, I can send you two or three copies, and you can actually give out one oh, or two to totally. You know what? Listeners. We will we will chat a little bit after after I hit stop recording here about that. Um, mm. But yeah, MJ, thanks for doing the show. Uh, I cannot wait to to get my hands on the book and read it and and see where you take it i'm actually i don't know if i'm gonna get to it tonight because for me it's a little late but uh i think tomorrow uh, at my lunch hour i'm gonna go find that classic story uh and just and just read it real quick because hey hey you know what just come on my facebook page because i've put up the videos okay so there's like yeah there's like a video narration oh, of the original story in fact the guy who did a narration he actually followed me the other day he was like well done thank you uh, and I was like, yeah, it's out there. So there's like, I've put like tons of videos, like I've put maybe seven, eight videos. So you can, you have different versions. So if you like videos, you have the versions. If you like reading the poem, it's there. So it's just there ah, on the Facebook page. I don't have to go anywhere then. I'm you made, made it easy for me. No. Nope. Yeah. Just you, your readers, whoever's interested, Perfect. just come onto that Facebook page. It's just follow the Pied Piper. Facebook would be like, yeah, we know the page you're looking for because I think I'm the only one doing that sort of thing. But but I'm so happy that that you were the one. Like after talking to you, I'm so happy that you were the one to to like get this untapped market. Um, I, I'm excited to see see what happens and what your future uh, with the series is. Oh, definitely. I think after launch, well, I'll probably try to come back on. I think it was a bit funny that I kept missing the dates because the times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, we kept missing yeah. each other. The readers, the, your listeners, don't even know no, like how much we were trying. I, I, I want to say that that's see, that's the hardest yeah. thing scheduling, especially when like because I it's usually easier for me to talk to people who aren't on the East Coast because like no one wants to okay. do a show at ten thirty at night or eleven thirty at night. Uh, so all right, so, okay. so West Coast people they can like oh yeah we can do one at seven thirty at night or like 
you know, someone that's, you know, across yeah. the pond like you, like, yeah, they're like, eh, it might be a little early. And, and we sometimes find a time that works. And uh, lately, my just my schedule has been like really jam packed where it's like, all right, I have these times and these times alone. Well, yeah, you know, don't get me wrong. I was trying to make it work for me selfishly, but uh, me trying to be lazy because I was like, I don't have to wake up early in the morning. But, uh, hey, look, I was like, you know what? I want to just do this uh, because your podcast, I have to say, is very different. Well, thank uh, you. And it's it's quite, yeah, and it's very cool. And I'm actually enjoying it because there was a time when I was thinking, we keep missing each other. Yeah. Uh, I guess we're going to have to just cancel it. No, no, no. I I always try not to cancel. I try to, if it's, if it's something where it's getting to the point where we need to cancel, then I just start trying to figure out how I can I can work. Wait, but you know what? It is. It worked out. Uh, I'm so happy you did the show, and oh, we'll, I'm happy to be the show. Well, anyway, definitely nice. when when uh, the second book is ready to come out, we'll definitely have to have you back on uh, because I uh, I have a feeling after after getting myself reacquainted with the Pied Piper, uh, the classic story. And then within from your, your book that you're starting to write, I'll have questions, probably go on uh, another tangent. Hey, post them on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. We'll post them on Facebook and everything else. And then we can yeah. discuss different things. And you're like, Oh, I didn't know this. Yes. Uh, that inspired it. So yeah, we'll definitely, I'll, I'll definitely be one of the back. Perfect. The show. And I think if it does really well, I'm sure you'd be like, please come back. Oh yeah, of and course. Like, yeah. Uh, please come back. Please don't forget me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I made you. I gave you that step. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was the guy. You know you remember? That, yeah, that but it's, podcast. It's, it's, it's this kind of interviews that um, you know what your listeners will listen to, but someone else will pick it up because obviously I'm going to put that on Facebook yeah. right as well, and someone's going to pick it up and think, oh, well, actually, okay. Because you want to know the author. And I think that's one of the things I didn't mm. do when I first wrote the first book. I just wrote it and disappeared. I'll yeah, be away. Yeah. The book will sell itself on, on Kindle. Um, but now I realize, no, actually, sometimes we buy into the book because we have got to know the author. Yeah. And this podcast, you know, you're actually giving me a chance for people to even get a glimpse into the crazy me. And if mm-hmm. people like the crazy me, they're going to be like, actually, I would like to see what he writes about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, like, I could I even just write two pages. Yeah, and people still get it by into it because in, they, they sort of like. The in, uh, I think in 2017, in, in it's it's when you're a content creator, even if you are just a traditional author writing writing a novel, mm-hmm. you need to be that person that's just on Twitter, Facebook, or whatever. Because you know what? Because we just want to know if you if you're actually really real or you're just doing yeah. this for the money. Like, are you just taking this story because you just feel like oh. I can. I've done some projections. It, it can earn me a million dollars because it's a sentimental value. You know, no, it's. Are you like a genuine person? Do you really mm-hmm. like enjoy what you're doing? Um, and it's like behind the scenes type thing, you know. Yeah, and I think exactly. now, you, you know, Tesla. I'm sure Tesla is doing well because people have access to the CEO. Mm-hmm. Like I can tweet to him. Like I've never yeah. spoken to the CEO of the car drive. Like, I don't even know who he is, right? <laughs> yeah, but right. if you're a Tesla owner, you can just be like. I don't like this. Can you put, you know, do something about it? And the CEO's like, yeah, cool. Okay, I'll look into that. Oh, we had an update. The car can just go to not to 60 within two seconds now, you know? Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's the power of social media, man. It's yeah. like it just connects people. Uh, it's nice. I don't want to feel mm-hmm. like you're too far away from me. I, I want to feel like I can talk to you. Yeah, you might be big. You might be famous, but I can still have a chat with mm-hmm. you and I can still ask you questions. Yeah, it's 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 um, something that I try to you know I, obviously that's how I connect to uh, you know celebrities or, mm. or people that are you know uh, on a different stratosphere than I am, uh, and it's also where like you know I connect with my listeners or, or my fan base or whatever, um, okay. and it's it's yeah it's um, you use it right and and it and it does, usually does good by you you know. Mm, that, that's a, that's actually true. Yeah, if you use it right, yeah, it's, it's, it works like a charm. If you use it wrongly, it just destroys your reputation. But yeah, the good thing is you can always come back at something else, isn't it? That's yeah. the good thing about the internet. Yeah, yeah, that's you, it. You people can forget. Yourself. Yeah, I'm no longer MJ. I am um, <laughs> Shakespeare. <laughs> all right, all right, MJ. Um, thank you once again for doing the show. Um, thank you for having me. All the plugs that you need to know uh, for MJ and and the Pied Piper will be in the show notes. So make sure you check them out. Uh, I'm 
very excited for this book. You should be too. Um, get familiar with it on his Facebook page uh, and then pre-order it. It's going to be released on Black Friday of 2017 here, just in, a, in about a week or so from when this uh, podcast is released. And it's such a unique, I think, idea that needs to be supported and show that while it's Thank expanding you. upon um, property and IP already, it, it is also original. It, it, it's it's mm. I get I don't know I it's it's one of the, it's, I don't know how to explain it I I am I'm going to assume people know what I mean because they've been listening to me for nearly a hundred episodes at this point so um, yeah you, you, you got it. to write it's it's one of those things where the story itself is original like the way yes. I write it and everything else um, it's just that I've just based it on something to give it a backstory so to speak I've I've, I've just bought into the backstory yeah right there you go uh, but apart from that everything else is just like just in case someone wants to know, oh, what happened? Like, what was the Pied Piper from? Like, that, that's the backstory. Yep. But yep. when you look into the story, it's entirely, it's entirely mine. You know what I mean? So. Yes. And uh, like I said, it's uh, just, I, I can't wait. It, I just know it's gonna, just, I just know it's going to be good because it's such an interesting concept. So. Nah, I, I feel like just retiring right now. <laughs> like the way you, <laughs> yeah. the way you're just giving me the props. I'm like, you know what? I can just. Sit you should down probably and, preemptively uh, retire from your day job. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. My pie pay for money. It comes six days later from Amazon. You know. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, make sure you check out the show notes to uh, follow the pod, uh, the Pied Piper, uh, on Facebook, and and find out where you can pre-order and all that good stuff uh make sure you follow us on twitter and facebook at real awesome pod on both those mediums you can follow me directly on twitter at that nerdy kev that's where i do most of my tweeting and twatting uh you can give us a call at 267-223-4965 or of course uh you can send care of tellist to p.o box 177 uh fairless hills pennsylvania us of a one nine zero three zero uh you know what let's not send zombies riding uh riding dogs let's send the picture of pied piper leading zombies away from some village let's do that this time <laughs> mj thanks for doing the show yet again uh and and uh for everyone else this has been everything is awesome on awesomepodcast.com and core temp arts the podcast network and core temp arts.com uh we've been awesome thank you for listening to the core temp arts podcast network to listen to more core temp arts shows visit core